Hi, my name is Craig. I'm the technical manager here at QNAP UK. Now, today we're going to do a video of setting up the QTS operating system. So we do already have a video on the channel, but we've uh, changed the screens quite a bit uh, since the last video was made. So this is just a refresher. Um, largely, it's the same process, but this will just give you a guide on, on what to look for, what to click on. Um, so this is being done on a TSH2490FU, uh, but the uh, options are going to be the same regardless of the NAS for the most part. Um, only NAS, uh, such as the ones with the small H in the part code, or um, pretty much I think at this point is things like the uh, X73A series, um, or some of the um, X72 series as well. And they're going to see an option like this. So the first screen you'll get to, you may see an option where you see uh, that you can switch to QUTS Hero as well. Um, so on some NAS you do get that option, but you'll only get that option if the NAS is online with a DHCP address uh, that can connect to the internet. If you've got it directly connected to a laptop, for example, uh, you won't see this option. It does need internet connectivity to offer the uh, switch OS option. Um, so we're going to ins install QTS, which is what we're running already on this NAS. So we're going to click on the Start Smart Installation option which is then going to take us to a firmware check. Um, so older firmwares didn't necessarily have this option. I'm already on the latest version, so that's what it's giving me here. Current version with a skip. Um, if there was a, a firmware update, you would see that option here, or you can upload your own custom one here if you want to as well. So we're just going to skip this step. Uh, so now it wants things like the NAS name. So I'll just give this a NAS name of uh, the NAS itself. So I know which one it is. Uh, type in a nice strong password. Okay, next. Uh, so here we've got options to set it up with a internet time server. Um, if you are setting this up as an isolated NAS, uh, don't choose the bottom default options. Set maybe the top option to copy the time off your computer, or you can type it in manually. I'm going to leave it on the default with a internet time server. You can, of course, type in any internet time or NTP server that you want into this box. I'm going to click next. Um, here's where you'd set the NAS IP address. So if you wanted to set the NAS up where you're doing uh, certain services, port forwards through your firewall, things like that, it would be more important here to set the use static address. So you can set a static address and you can pick which LAN connection you're using. Um, I'm just going to use the obtain for the purposes of the demo, but if you do need a static IP address, you can choose that option here. You can always change this option later once the NAS has fully booted up. And this is what platforms you're using in the network. So these days I generally untick the Mac option because all this is enabling compared to the Windows option is AFP. And 99% of the services on a Mac these days can work just fine without AFP. So I don't see the need to run the extra uh, protocol. Um, in some situations, if you're using Time Machine Backup with the NAS, um, it will uh, enable AFP for you later when you turn that feature on. Um, but uh, Apple are probably going to change that over to SMB soon enough because they've not been updating AFP for quite some time now. So I'm just going to untick that, leaving just the Windows option at the top. Um, of course, if you need NFS enabling, you've got that at the bottom, but you can turn that on later as well if you need to. I'm going to click Next. This is just a summary of everything we've just uh, selected, and then you click Apply. A little warning that this will erase everything off the drives if you do this. So we're going to click OK. Let's initialize that one. Um, so now this is going to go off and do this. It's going to take uh, roughly five minutes uh, to go through. It's going to set all those settings that we've got. It's going to um, apply everything, um, get the base operating system effectively installed into a small system partition um, on the drives. Um, and then when it's finished, we'll get a screen up. Um, that says go to NAS management and we can continue the install process from there. Um, so we'll just leave that to do its thing and we'll come back to it in a moment. Okay, we can see that's now completed. Um, get a congratulations, and we've got the option to go to the NAS management. Now, if you change the IP address during the initial setup to a static IP address, uh, this button would take you to that from now on. So right now, we're still on the current IP address, and when I click go to NAS management, we'll still be on the same one because I left it on obtain, uh, but this is where it would change to the new one. 
So here we go, we get to the login screen. So we need to log in with the username of admin and the password is the secure password you created during the setup wizard. Um, so this is going to now log us in. There's gonna be a couple of pop-ups here trying to get you started with the NAS, some different options and functions that you can do. Um, so one of the first things you can do is create some storage on the NAS itself. Um, so by default, the drives are going to be added in and just completely empty, completely free. Um, you get some guidance here on the uh, help center that's on the NAS, so you can choose to have that appear each time you log in. Um, just some information if you need any um, extra licenses for additional software, so you can choose to have those. Um, and we do get a warning that there are no volumes or storage pools. Um, so this is really just letting you know you need to create some storage uh, to really get past the first step. Um, so here what we're going to do is go to the storage slash snapshots option on the left hand side. And the first step is always really going to be to create a storage pool or a volume. Um, I generally recommend storage pool, but we do have a, a separate video uh, on creating volumes on the channel. Um, and it'll give you lots of different options for thick, thin, static volumes, things like that. So there's a lot more guidance there. Uh, you get to choose which RAID type. So I'll choose RAID 10 in this, uh, in this example here. So we'll click next. And you've got some SSD options because I'm using SSDs, um, alert thresholds. I generally disable that when I'm doing a storage pool because if you create a thick volume at the 100% capacity of the pool, uh, you'll immediately get a warning that your NAS is full. So I generally untick that if I'm planning to use a thick volume and then you can click create. Just another warning that everything on the drives will be, uh, that you selected will be erased. Um, so we're happy with that. Um, so now it's going to create a storage pool. Um, so once it's created the pool, uh, you do have to then create a volume. Um, so the storage pool is where uh, the RAID preferences are set. And within that storage pool, you can create multiple volumes if you wish for different purposes. A little bit like doing partitions, I guess, uh, with a sort of computer setup. So you could have a different volume for a different task. So for example, on my personal NAS, I have a volume for the surveillance recordings um, and a volume for my data. Uh, the volume for my data, I have an SSD cache accelerating it, but I don't accelerate the uh, recording drive. It just doesn't need it. Um, so I, I keep it separate like that. So I'm using my SSD cache for my actual data, uh, not for the surveillance footage. So there's lots of uh, setups you can do. Each uh, use case is different. So I can't give you an example of this is what you should do. Um, it really does depend on the situation. If anybody wants any help or advice picking a uh, an ideal setup, um, drop me a comment there and let me know what your use case is, what you've uh, got, so what, what type of drives you have, which NAS you have, uh, the general use case, and I'll try and help you out with a, with a couple of suggestions there. Um, so now the storage pool is created, it's telling us we do need to create a volume to use the NAS, so we'll click new volume, and you've got three options here, you've got a static volume, thick volume or thin volume, I generally pick uh, the thick or thin option simply because snapshots are supported on them and snapshots are not supported on a static volume. Um, thick volume is a slight bit faster than thin, but thin is much more flexible. Uh, you can convert between thick and thin at any time you like. Again, for a lot more information on this topic, we do have another video on the channel and that's really unchanged since we made it. Um, so I'm gonna choose thick volume, click next, and you get to choose how big you want this. So you can set it to maximum, you can type in a capacity. So if I put in here, so, let's say 1.5 terabytes of my 2.5. Um, so you can rename it if you need to. I'm gonna click next, I'm gonna click finish. So that's gonna create my first volume. It's going to uh, start downloading a couple of the default apps that we install that aren't built into the firmware, uh, hybrid backup sync, QSync central, things like that. Um, so they'll be added to the app center and you'll see a few pop-ups uh, starting down at the bottom right, just letting you know that things are progressing. And um, so it's gonna create a few default shares for you. Uh, you can always hide those default shares or create your own as well at a later date. That's very easy to do. Um, but ultimately, that's your base setup of our QTS operating system done um, with sort of the updated interface screens that we have now. Um, but that's your basic process to getting an as up and running, ready to take data, ready to use. Um, of course, uh, next steps would be going to the App Center, adding any apps that you want to customize the NAS how you need. Um, and also changing any settings that you need within the control panel. So all those icons are just right there on the desktop so you can configure anything else that you want. Control panel has the most settings, so if you wanted to dive in and change some of the settings from the initial wizard, um, for example, you decided you do want AFP enabled, you can go to network and file services and we've got the Win Mac NFS section. 
And as I didn't tick the uh, Apple box, uh, AFP is disabled, but you can enable that here. Uh, same with NFS, if you need NFS enabling, that's there. But by default, uh, the Microsoft networking is on, which is at SMB shares, and there's lots of advanced options here. So if you want to change the options here from SMB1 to say SMB3 only, uh, you can set that as well. Um, but there are a lot of different options that you can set within the control panel. Uh, so we can see that there's uh, volumes formatted. It's downloading a couple of the default apps that we've got there. So it's all going ahead nicely. Uh, anytime you can always go back in to the storage and snapshots to find the progress um, on what's happening on the NAS. Uh, so you can see it's still creating default folders. You'll get a, a, a green tick with a ready uh, information next to it when it's finished doing what it's doing. Uh, but yeah, that's the default setup of our very latest version of QTS, which is 4.5.3. Um, if anybody has any questions or needs any help, please do let us know in the comments box below. We're pretty quick at replying, so we'll, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.